This no is more gonna be though. the match. Okay, no, okay, we're, here we're not doing it. <laughs> wait, 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 watch that, watch that. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentle Lambs and Gentle Giants, Game 1, BTK, Up Against Ohio, the sequel, the second part of this amazing series, and my introduction is better than Trex, and ten now out we're of underway ten, for match ten, 1. 10 out of 10, Deku, <laughs> definitely a much better introduction than mine was in the second one, even though I topped your first one, but we are here now, and we've talked about the draft so much, I'm just excited to see how it unfolds, Deku. Absolutely. And I, it feels like we've been waiting so long, but it's finally underway. And in between these two teams, Trex, we're seeing a mirrored effect on them both of the rotations here from the junglers. So it looks like we might be skipping out on a litho fight. Is Zane starting on that red buff? Maybe looking to help out on that gold lane. You can see Yato already making his rotation. Or not over to the gold lane, but over here to the XP lane, maybe for that early play um, with this Farsa. So you can see the teams that are BTK is already trying to use that rotation that they're going to get from Farsa with the wings by wings. They didn't find anything yet, but you can see they are looking potentially to be able to take someone down nice and early with it. Yeah, and best player doesn't even want to go for the Litho Wander Shark. We were, I was thinking maybe he would be, babysit oh. gold lane, but he is sitting more of, he's getting vision. He, he made sure that Zane already took his orange buff. This gave information over to best player, and now they know, all right, we're going to give up Litho Wander here. Things going pretty slow, though. No clashes. We're only a minute in, but a lot of times in NA, they get spicy off rip, but I think both teams know how much is on the line here. Absolutely. A lot on the line. Like you said, a lot on the side of Moba Zane there. So he's going to use that retro to pick up that goal to crab. And, you know, I'm liking what Shark is doing, right? We talked about how ISO kind of had that upper hand with the carry with the landing phase. But if Nicky does a good job here, Shark does an excellent job of babysitting, it can definitely help out the matchup because uh, obviously in the 1v1, it kind of goes in the favor of ISO. But in the 2v1 number advantage, kind of got to tip your hat over there to the side of Ohio. Yeah, I mean, so far, though, PTK, I would say that uh, Zane's having a slightly quicker laning phase. He's already in position for this turtle. We need to see how Yato and Shark are gonna, I mean, how Yato and Joybaj are going to come in as well. Zane's trying to claim a nice position for it. Yureshi also trying to get in the midst of this T, locking up, getting loaded. Drops that Falling Star Moon, gets a stun. Out comes a nice Feathered Air Strike. Turtle getting very, very low. Zane takes the first turtle. Here comes the on Blast. Joybosh. Shark gonna get stunned up. A lot of damage. Does not have that ultimate. Yato taken out by Yureshi though. T able to find Shark. Overall, could be good. Yureshi very low as well. A nice double kill going into the hands of T, giving BTK a solid lead in this phase. Absolutely. They took the two for one trade. And not just that, right? Not stopping at the kills. Moba Zane able to pick up that turtle in the first retry battle up against the best player on the tanks a lot. So it's going to be a huge sign for them. But hold on. Speaking of signs. They still should be able to get out of that, and that's a good... I mean, the fact that they weren't able to get that pickoff is very huge. Joybaj was a little out of position, wasn't ready to try to help out ISO there. So if ISO gets taken down too early, could give a huge advantage to basically here. That's right, and speaking of things on the way here, look at Yato and Joybaj. Ooh, a lot of damage on a shark. Didn't have the ultimate once again. It's another pickoff for BTK. And this is what we might see over and over again. It's going to be extremely hard for Shark to be able to keep hold of that time journey. But hang on, speaking of things. Ooh, and in a very bad spot. Going to get taunted up. Uh -oh. Killing spree over to T. You actually get the nice oh, wow. knock over, but in comes Joy Boss. Look for the stun. You actually take a lot of damage. Praises Wrath does miss, but the stun comes in. And Zane picks up the kill. That puts us at 5 1 at three and a half minutes. Hey, man, as Moba Zane said, it's my Fredrin. He's one zero and two already. Had the first neutral taken up. He's definitely on the lead. He has the level advantage right now. Already about to go for that number seven. But look at the group up from the side of BTK. They're already going for this four-man rotation. They're looking to go for the invade. And right now, a potential clash underway. Yeah, Feather Air Strike comes down. Cold Balter comes out, trying to get best player over to safety. But BTK still holding a solid lead. Hoon looking for Yato decides not to go for it. BTK dis embark from that journey but still you can see the presence they have over the map and you know that is so huge because like we were talking about earlier in the draft being able to force the utility time journey colt ultra both off the board here when you're talking about going for this turtle and ohio brothers isn't going to have anything to go contest he's going to go right into the hands of moba zane who's going to pick up the second neutral in this jungle matchup up against the best player taking the lead right now for btk yeah, and a good lead at that at only four and a half minutes. We're talking 2,000 already.
Two turtles over the side of BTK. And I, I said in the beginning, I feel like BTK is a strong end game with the way they're pacing this, with the lead they already have. I think they're putting this more and more into their favor. There's going to be a great mid game spike for Yato here. There's going to be a nice mid game spike for T and ISO and Zane as well. So it's looking very clean for them overall. Absolutely. And you know, I feel like we're kind of seeing what I was harping on about earlier. With this digging in the hands of Shark, the gameplay is so passive. They're being forced to do whatever BTK wants to put them in a situation to waste uh, as far as utilities. Shark having to use the, the time during, like we saw earlier, the cold they're coming out. It's a very reactive game from the Ohio Brothers. They don't really have the uh, edge control, you want to say. The aggression really is in their favor. If BTK, as long as they don't make any mistakes when they're looking to force out these utilities, it's kind of just going to go in their favor every single time because they have the CC because they have the damage, they have the layering to be able to stack up as far as engages and those uh, able to get to the back line. So it's, it's going to be extremely hard for Ohio to be able to deal with BTK if they can't get the right footing to be able to make those utilities come to, into great effect in those 5v5 clashes. Not only that, but in that first five minutes, they spent a lot of time up in that gold lane trying to get a pick onto ISO there. A lot of wasted time at that, because if we look at ISO's KDA, it's still zero, zero, and zero. No death. We saw Hoon up there. We saw Shark up there. So spending all that time and letting Zane, Joy Bosch, and Rest, and Yato and the rest of camp moving around the map, getting better positions overall. Here was another dive onto ISO. Maybe able to pick up this one. Basic, finally grabbing one. Didn't need the teammates there for that one, though. Absolutely. But like you said, it's taken a long time to get that kind of result. Finally getting a kill on the board up on ISO and that 1v1. But was it enough and is it on time right now to be able to catch up with BTK? It is going to help him take a lead in that gold advantage uh, up against ISO. But here now we're seeing a turtle fight in between both jungles. Yeah, best player is going to able Ooh. to take that. Just click the button, walk away. Well played. Wasn't able to use his Phantom Execution, but ended up not needing it. And I think as we get a little bit farther in this game, he will be able to go against Zane in those retro battles a little bit better. He's a little bit tankier. He can last. And now, first tower of the game, going to fall over the side of the Ohio Brothers. Starting to see the tables turn just a little bit. Best player puncturing through, getting a little bit of burst damage onto the side of BTK, but nothing too major. Zane wanting to maybe possibly take this fight moving through the map but ohio brothers have now taken a little bit of control here you know that's actually quite huge for them right we were talking about it earlier with the babysitting it hadn't led to much but now being able to find a kill on iso and that went directly into the hands of basic not to anyone else that they didn't want that to go to man going here zane maybe in some trouble yeah he's tanky though he's bulky i think they know that they can't they don't have the damage quite but wait a second a lot of damage on a shark shark's force use a flicker time journey comes out but it's a selfish one at that numenon blast able to get that stun and T picking up another mega kill for the team. He's looking good right now at 4-0-1. Esmeralda, is she back? But we have to pay attention to the macro coming in from basic. While they lost that, he was able to find a tower on the opposite side of the map. Now both side lanes have been opened up by the side of Ohio Brothers, but BTK is going to look to respond with that up here in the top side. You can see them looking to take up this tower, and that's going to be good because originally, before they were able to find the tower, it allowed Basic to be able to, able to rotate and make some plays. But hang on! Oh, oh, lots of burst damage. Feathered Airstrike hits hard at eight minutes in. Yato able to find that. Not only that, but they take that tower, like you said, and look at the health bar on that bottom tower. It's low. Look at the health bar on this middle tower. It's gone. BTK taking a little bit of control here, swinging back and forth. We can't count T.O. beat out just yet, though. You know, I feel like this has a lot to do right now with kind of the positioning uh, from Ohio. You could see they had Ureshi basic kind of in those side lanes still, even though they had that first tower down. But BTK is wasting no time responding to that. They know that the, the marksman and the XP are off to the side. They're forcing fights in the jungle, forcing their pressure. Like you said, they have the damage and the CC to do that up against this Diggy, up against this Faramish Shark and Hoon having a hard time holding back against them. And when they go for the clash in the jungles, there's just no response from Ohio. They literally have to fall to the oppression that BTK is putting off of them. But speaking of oppression, we're seeing both of the teams now starting to jockey for this board. It seems like there's still great positioning here from BTK. Will T.O.B. be able to help the best player? He's the only one right now dancing around that pit. A lot of damage on Mobile Zane. Everybody's here. Press Wrath Shark goes down first. T picking up the kill. Joy Boss into the backside. Dureshi able to find Dureshi. ISO. Still going at it. Mobile Zane still on the field though. Joy Boss very, very low. Dureshi picks it up. T here as well. Looking for it. Does he find it? No. Best player takes the first objective in this Civil War. Lord going to the side of TOB. A little bit of a swing there. TOB back on the map, evening out the playing field with this gold as well now. Looking for this mid tower. Zane 
forced to kind of back away here. Team at the backside with that fallen star moon. Yureshi able to pull him back in. Uh -oh. Shark as well. Nice reverse time. T very low. Nice. They're looking for it. Four roses. Phantom execution, but can't get the finish. Down comes the feathered airstrike, and down goes best player. BTK trying to respond here. Lord still coming. Maybe a bit too greedy from best player there. They had the advantage with that Lord coming up for the 6v5 with that extra help from the Lord that they were able to pick up up against BTK with that well thought out fight that they had up against them in that top side of the river. But with him falling now, that Lord is kind of going to go to waste. Not going to be able to pressure anything else as far as towers. And you would have liked to see that happen, but that's just about that discipline right in between these two teams who's going to be able to think clearly when it comes to executing on these macro decisions but hang on maybe another force fight tracks Zane keeps wanting to force this as well but he's starting to get melted from basic Numina Blast does come down does not connect Shark able to use that reverse time Yato creating distance for the team Goon and basic still maybe look for something Moba Zane going to try to work on his orange buff don't know if Bloodthirsty Kings want to try to force this maybe give up the tower no minions left so they buy themselves a bit more time you know, Trex, I kind of got a harp on. I got to point it out a little bit here. Now, we were talking about these matchups, right? And right now, I want to key in on Joy Baj and Shark. Shark struggling a lot earlier on, right? Being forced to use those time journeys. He's been taking some deaths, but he is still a Rome. 0, 5, and 3. Not the prettiest KDA, but he's still being impactful with the time journey. Joy Baj has not really landed too many successful ults. And it seems like right now, when he's trying to layer in after Zane forces the time journey, it's a little too early. He needs to kind of sit back, wait a little bit more until it's completely gone, and then look for the set because he's starting to throw it in a little too early. But speaking of looking for sets, he can still play from Joy Bot. Shark still does have that time journey. Gonna pop it. I think that's the goal right there. T able to get it with the Fallen Star Moon. Basic though, caught in the midst of all four members, able to puncture out, get away here. Poon coming through the wall, but BTK have secured a nice position in towards this Lord Pit. Still 40 seconds on. Zane gonna hold down vision, maybe come closer to this purple buff. The rest of the team try to get a flank. Got to keep our eyes on to basic. He's always trying to work that backside. Looking for something. Nice possible pick here. Phantom execution comes through. Joy Bosch very low, but T crashes in. Appraisal's wrath. Best player very low, but T not able to get the finish. Look at basic though basic. with the macro once again, taking another tower, consistently finding these flanks around the back end. And they're playing this extremely well. They've been having a hard time in team fights, but they're having a hard time splitting up the map, finding the objectives right now. And that's going to be huge for them if they want to stay in contention with BTK. They're going to have to force the responses. The same way BTK has been forcing out the utility, they got to force them to play their game. You have to make them go to these lanes respond to open up these objectives. You can see TOB trying to use that pressure that basic has been utilizing to open up this neutral, opening up this Lord for the side of TOB. Again, they found the first one, and it looks like they're going to be pulled and ready to try to capture a second one. Moba is the only one here in the pit currently showing on the map, but that's good for BTK. You can see, yeah, we do see Yureshi here with that great positioning right now. Yeah, this is bad. The Ohio brothers have been known, right? I feel like they've been so known for their macro overall, their placement on the map. Yato gonna drop the feather airstrike, but in comes Yureshi. Ooh. Nobody has vision on him. He gets the kill, a big mega kill. Lord, very low. Zane also looking for a position. Numenon Blast comes down with the flicker. Three members taking a lot. Basic force using it. Zane finds the Lord. This could be bad though. And Phantom Execution coming in. Base. Best player in a rough spot, not able to find a kill though. Yato, the only one to fall. They need to get out of town quick because their health bars are low, but they do secure the objective. You know, these teams are scary, man. All those ultimates, all that clashing and damage going on, and only Yato falls. So clearly these players knowing their limits almost to a pinpoint accuracy, knowing exactly what they can give and take as far as dishing and dealing out damage right now. But like you said, Lord falling into the hands of Moba Zane, a huge retreat from Twitter Fingers himself as they're going to look to march down the lane and maybe poise a nice siege with the Lord. Good old Mike coming through with the Lord take there. Moba Zane himself, T does lock on with the feather airstrike. Best player taking a little bit of damage. He's a tanky boy though, should be able to puncture away. Now Lord still coming. Yureshi up on the top side, gonna have to come back to base as BTK going for the typical pocket formation. They wanna try to get something out of this. They know the only option is going for this bot tower. The crash comes in, able to take that second tier tower. BTK still on the advance. The Ohio brothers 
slowly moving backwards. The BTK don't want to force it. They've gotten a little bit. They've taken a bit of the map, and they might be backing off. Feather Air Strike does come down, putting on a little bit of damage onto Hoon there. Best player versus Mobazane once again in the midst of this as the rest of TOB hold the back line over to the mid lane. They're going to be able to take another tower, and finally, EV evening out the playing field here. A well-played push from BTK. Absolutely. But Ohio not losing everything, right? They lost a tier two, lost the tier uh, two down in the bot slide as well. So it does bring them down to the inhibitors, but you still have them. Or the high ground towers, I should say, over the side of Ohio Brothers. BTK, like you said, though, did have a great push there. That Lord was huge falling into the hands of Michael Myers. Them, like you called him, nice Mike. Mike and Ike. I want to be like Mike <laughs> if I was a jungler to be MOBA Zane, but he's doing a great job, right? He lost those early neutrals, but like we know, Zane, with the pressure on his back, pressure on his shoulders, when it comes down to crunch time, put it into the hands of MOBA Zane. That retry hand was right on time, right on point, and it let BTK turn this game a little bit more into their favor. You know, BTK really likes, I mean, I feel like even past BTK, even old BTK, they're so known for their, you know, pocket positioning. They're very five- Roaming around the map, maybe one four positioning. The Ohio brothers recently in the uh -oh. past few weeks Yato have T. been known for splitting around. But Yato T, for the strike comes down. Yureshi is going to get stunned up, and the response deleted. Oh, what happened there? Yureshi and Basic walk into a bush, and you don't gank them. They take you. Moba Zane and Iso oh. trying to respond and take something here. Hoon very low, going to get shredded down from that speedy light wheel. Now they're going to move Punk on to so. Shark, a lot of damage. Us pulled back, Time Journey comes out. Best player puncturing through. Joy Bosch with the Numenon Blast, completely whiffs it, not able to find anyone. Basic, Basic still up in the top side. Yureshi trying to delay them. Basic That's able correct. to take another tower here, but the Flicker comes in, Iso comes out. This is bad for Best, I mean, this is bad for the side of BTK. They're trying to go back, Basic takes another tower. Moba Zane and Yato against the world. Five members of TOB up. It's looking a little bit rough for the side of BTK. And what a bounce back Trex EOB. It all started in the rice fields up there in the top side. They tried to catch them off guard in the bush. Yato and T, but a quick Luna reverse from Ohio Brothers. And now they're in great position to be able to take up this Lord this time. But you can't count out BTK. Mobile Zane is still alive and on the board. And that means it's a 50-50 even with the number advantage into the side of Ohio. Twitter fingers looking to take off best player, best chunk on the line. Yeah, a lot is on the line, but Basic now here, and he hurts. He does a lot of damage, especially oh. on the Zane. Zane gonna get shredded down, Immortality pops. Keep her eyes on the T, though. Hiding out in this bush. Zane does buy a little bit of time here. Yato maybe gonna look for something here as well, but currently, Ohio Brothers do control this pit. T now gonna come in. Falling Star Moon does not connect. Feather to airstrike, able to land something. A best player should be able to take this Lord. Now they're responding. Blazing Duet comes out with a Petrify. And four members are gone on the side of BTK. Make it five. The upswing is over because the Ohio brothers are trying to end it here tonight. No members up. Mova Zane up in about 12 seconds. Lord coming soon. Can they defend this push? Don't know if it's going to be able to happen. Welcome to the Midwest, Ohio Brothers. Stopping the path to power tricks. That is going to be it. Zane knows it's over. Recalls come out. The Ohio Brothers take game one.